And finally, um, Clone Wars episode 21 and 22 from the fourth season, uh, Brothers and Revenge. So Darth Maul is back, and the thing is that uh, before I watched these two episodes from the Clone Wars, uh, somebody uh, I talked to said that um, a big, big Star Wars fan said th that they were terrible. That it was terrible what they did with Darth Maul, that it was horrible, completely ruined the character. Now, after watching this and after seeing what they did with uh, Darth Maul, I really don't see what's so terrible about it. I really don't think they ruined him at all because Darth Maul, let's be serious now, is a blank canvas. You can basically do whatever you want with him. It, it doesn't matter. He was never he never had a personality. You never knew anything about him. All you knew is that he's an, he's a, an apprentice to Palpatine and he can fight really well and that's about it. So in the first episode, they shown him as this like spider, spy, mechanical spider, again with the spiders, what's with the spiders? Uh, spider mechanical monster type thing, and he's crazy, he's like all out, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, crazy. So um, that's, I think it's a good way to start because you, from the very first um, frame you see him in, it's clear that this guy is not the Darth Maul of the Phantom Menace uh, from the ep from episode one Phantom Menace it's a completely new character and then they kind of rebuild him and they make him somewhat more similar to Darth Maul from the fa from the Phantom Menace but still he's pretty much his own character and a lot of that has to do with Sam Witwer's voice acting which um, I, I just loved Sam Witwer's voice work in this because he really is a great a great voice actor and um, he went from like the difference between crazy Darth Maul to kind of together Darth Maul is amazing really love Sam, uh, Sam Witwer's uh, voice work in this also something interesting is happening here to Darth Maul because he came back completely 100% intent on getting uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in fact, there is no reason offered for his return. There is no motivation. There is no explanation for how he got to this point in the Clone Wars. Um, other than the fact that it was his hate that kept him alive. His hate for Obi-Wan Kenobi. But they don't ever say, how did you get to be a big spider mechanical thingy? What happened there? Um, but it's interesting that they chose this line of... this. Uh, this plot line for Darth Maul because if you think about it, Darth Maul's return signals a pretty big problem for Palpatine. And Darth Maul himself, he's kind of self-aware of some things and he gives some hints into how much he knew before what happened in episode one, for instance, at some point his brother Savage Opress. By the way, Darth Maul has a brother, like since fucking when, but never mind. Um, somebody mentions his brother mentions, you know, the Clone Wars started and blah blah blah. And Darth Maul is like, Ah, oh, they started without me. And he's like, Oh, so you knew about the Clone Wars. You knew what Palpatine was planning. And at some point, Darth Maul goes, You know, I was an apprentice to the most powerful being in the galaxy. And my, my thinking was, Well, why don't you get back to that? The most powerful being in the galaxy is still the most powerful being in the galaxy and he will probably be that for the next 25 years or something so come on let's you know snap to it you can you can you can refill your position you can get back in the business but no he doesn't do that and he doesn't do that because he doesn't want he probably I mean I the script writers don't want to draw that much attention to the fact that Palpatine should kill this bastard, okay? He's walking around, he knows the plan, he knows the deal, he knows the spiel, so, you know, kill him already. He's like, he's a loose end. Don't tell me that Palpatine, Palpatine likes loose ends. Uh, but that doesn't happen, obviously, and the second episode, uh, when Darth Maul is all together, the second episode, uh, like the season, the actual season finale of Star Wars The Clone Wars feels 100% like fan service. It was like a bunch of cool scenes one right after the other or it's like this is what fans always wanted to see. They wanted to see Obi-Wan Kenobi and Asajj Ventress fighting together against they wanted to see Darth Maul back in an actually capable position. 
Um, so, you know, what's wrong with fan service, especially in the Star Wars universe where so much is like George Lucas pissing on the fans to begin with. So, you know, you can't really hate that much on it. But I love the animation. I love the voice work. Um, I had some problems with uh, episode 21 with the episode brothers. The start fe felt very clunky. Um, I didn't I didn't hate what they did with Darth Maul at all because I think you can do anything you want with Darth Maul to begin with. Um, but you know it was it was a bit of a cop out how they completely skipped over explaining how he actually survived. So I I don't think I I don't know if I'm going to keep watching Clone Wars. Like I said, I only watched these two episodes for Darth Maul. Uh, but I'm impressed. I'm pretty impressed with, with what they did. It's also very violent. It's a lot more violent than I than I expected it to be. To be, but maybe that's something that they. It is in its fourth season, and they pretty much were, they got a rhythm going now. They know what they want to do. Um, they probably worked their way their way up to this level of uh, violence and intensity. But all in all, uh, I liked it. I really liked it. I don't see. Uh, I'm I'm curious what other Star Wars fans think about it because I don't really see any problem with what they did with Darth Maul. What what would you have wanted them to do with the return of Darth Maul? 